Hear the word of God from the book of Job. Then the Lord changed Job's fortune when he prayed for his friends, and the Lord doubled all of Job's earlier possessions. All his brothers and sisters and acquaintances came to him and ate food with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him concerning all the disaster the Lord had brought on him, and each one gave him a kessa, which is a coin, and a gold ring. Then the Lord blessed Job's latter days more than his former ones. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 oak of yaxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and daughters. He named one Jima, Jimima, the second Kazia, the third Karen Hapuk. No women in all the land were as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave an inheritance to them along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw four generations of his children. Then Job died old and satisfied. Let us pray. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, and lighten us with your celestial fire. For if you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. Be with us, we pray, in the name of your beloved. Amen. I was driving on Monday trying to get an errand or two done before I went off to work, and I was going to the library to return a couple of books. And uh, every single one of the lights, the traffic lights that I encountered, turned green right when I needed it to and stayed green through the intersection. That was five traffic lights I had to go through. And it was such a remarkable series of events that I started to notice how wonderful this was. I saved a good five minutes, I guess, uh, on that travel. Now, the six additional stoplights that I had to go through on my way to the freeway were not so cooperative. But in the moment of getting to the library in record time, I was thankful. The blessings that we receive, we often take for granted. And I'm not just talking about literal green lights. I'm talking about the green lights that we have in our lives that we don't even think about. For example, think of this building that we are sitting in now. I know there are several people here in worship who had something to do with its coming about, either financially or hands-on or both. But there are many of us here who are latecomers, newcomers, who had absolutely nothing to do with the finances or the building of this structure. And yet, we latecomers enjoy the beauty and the stability of the building, the heat and the air conditioning and lights that make our time here comfortable and fruitful. Those of us who had nothing to do with bringing this building into existence are blessed, as are those who had everything to do with bringing this building into existence. We are blessed with an abundance. In addition, to just this church building. I'm talking about all of our lives. We are blessed with an abundance, all that we have and all that we are. As St. Paul puts in 1 Corinthians 4, 7, what do you have that God hasn't given you? And if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? God has gifted us with everything, even our lives, all of it is a gift. Even our money is a gift from God. People often misquote the scripture that says the love of money is the root of all evil by saying money is the root of all evil, which isn't true. Money is neither evil nor good. It is simply a means to an end. It is like a musical instrument or a construction tool that sounds beautiful, that does beautiful work in the hands of those who know how to use the instrument or the tool. Our faith tells us not to worship the money, but to use the money as the tool that it is, as the gift from God that it is. 
At the same time, there is something mysterious and bewildering about money, says William Enright in his book, Kitchen Table Giving. Kitchen Table Giving. He says we can never take what we have for granted. One day we may have it, and the next day we don't. And some have more than others. In one of our seminars, he writes, a second career pastor who had been a stockbroker grabbed his, our attention when he confessed, I've made millions of dollars and I've lost millions of dollars. I have found money in itself to be meaningless, if not downright capricious. Our Bible story talks today about the surprise of blessings and underscores the observation that money and wealth is capricious, namely unpredictable. Here one day, gone the next, back again, gone again. Money is unpredictable. Job, as you know, was visited with great tragedy, losing his children, livestock, and property all in the same day. The whole of the book of Job is an examination of what happens when bad things happen to good people. Job is the original Rabbi Kushner when bad things happen to good people who did everything right and still was visited with tragedy. Job did everything right and then some. He even prayed for his sons and daughters when they had a, pr a party uh, in one of the sons or daughters' homes. Uh, he prayed for them just on the off chance that one of them sinned during the party. He would just pray for all of them and cover them with God's prayer and blessing. He did everything right, and Job, through no fault of his own, lost everything. The story is told as a contest between good and evil, between God and Satan, to see if even a limited human being like Job, who praised God when everything went right, would still praise God when everything went wrong. Today's reading catches him at the very end of the story, listing all the blessings bestowed upon him. He was blessed with the restoration of his family, blessed with twice as much livestock and material goods as he had before. But even though the reader has in the back of their mind all that, that all these blessings can't be enough for someone who has lost everything, one can't help but be amazed at all that Job has received. In the end, God gave Job twice as much as he had before, as if to remind Job that life's fragility is trumped by God's unutterable generosity, writes William Enright. Life's fragility is outdone, outshined by God's unsurpassed generosity. I spoke earlier of the great gift this church building is to us, both to those who had something to do with it and to those of us who had nothing to do with its construction. But this church building is just an illustration of a larger reality, that nothing on this earth is here due to our creativity alone. Our home, this planet earth, is here for us to live on in a sustainable way through no action of our own. It is something that we have been gifted with and we are given as a gift to tend and care for and nurture and grow. Our lives we did nothing to bring about but we are given our lives as a gift to tend and nurture and grow. Our relationships are given to us as gifts and we are given them to tend and nurture and grow. God gives us the talents of social skills and the wherewithal to make friendships. My relationship with you has something to do with the district superintendent, the bishop appointing me here. It also has something to do with the churches that I have served previously that helped nurture me and helped me to come a be become a better pastor. It also has something to do with my home church who inspired in me the call to become a pastor. It also has to do with my parents who brought me into being and their parents who brought them into being and, said, and so on. You get the idea. The one who gave us original life, the creator of us all, 
gave us skills and opportunities that brought us to where we are today. I wrote a no November newsletter uh, about a woman in the congregation who have, for years, has responded to the innocuous question, how are you, with the words, I'm grateful. She says that this uh, response has spurred all sorts of conversations, uh, it, or, or at the very least, a startled look. <laughs> when somebody says, oh, how you doing? And she responds, I'm grateful. And even if it's just a startled look that she gets, it brings that person short because she didn't do the I'm fine, which is like we're almost programmed all the time to respond. And she tells them if they ask, uh, what has made her grateful for that day? What has blessed her that week? I'm planning to follow her example this month of November, and I need your all's help because I will forget. Uh, but I plan to respond uh, when someone says, how are you, with I'm grateful, or I'm feeling blessed, or I, I, I'm thankful. I encourage you to try that too to try at least this week that when you're in a conversation with someone and say, hey, how you doing? You say, I'm, I know what I'll say initially is I'm fine. I mean, and I'm grateful. <laughs> be gentle with yourself. I'll be gentle with myself because this is a whole new thing and we have been so programmed for decades to do the I'm fine thing. So um, I encourage you to try it for this week uh, and try it for the entire month of November. I'm going to try it for the entire month of November to show myself. Because the, the benefit is primarily for me, I think, and primarily for you when you do it, is to remind yourself of those things for which you are grateful that day. Everything we have, our abilities, our relationships, our very lives, are gifts to us from God. At the end of every funeral and memorial service, I say this, that everything is given to us on loan from God, and everything is, is a gift, and we give thanks for the number of years that this loved one has been given to us to love here on earth. We have been given much. And what we are asked to do, what we are called to do, is to respond is by accepting the gift and hold that gift in trust and to say thank you. We have been given so much, including the lives of those we celebrate and remember this morning. So much. So much. For what are we grateful this day? Loving and giving God, we thank you for the abundance of gifts you've given us. Chief among them, the gift of this life, the gift of our relationships. Shepherd us and coach us. Teach us how to best use the time and money and resources you have given us for the glory of you, our creator. We pray in the name of the one who gave everything for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.